this video is going to summarize the big ideas of principal components analysis with a very simple example. So consider this example that we've talked about in class. And so we've observed p equal to two variables, and we only have 10 observations. So here is the x1 axis and the x2 axis. And when we plot these points, what we see is that they're um, pretty correlated with each other. And so they, since they're correlated, they approximately lie on this line. Okay, so the, the, we, we, it's, we don't really need two dimensions to represent uh, these points. We can approximately represent them using just one dimension. Okay, so the idea behind principal components analysis is to find a line that optimally explains all of these points with only one dimension. So how do we do that? There are two um, equivalent ways of characterizing this optimal subspace so that we can explain these points with only one dimension. So one approach is to seek the line that, that minimizes the errors. So the sum of squared orthogonal deviations, these orthogonal deviations are errors. We'd like to minimize the sum of those squared orthogonal deviations. So it turns out that the line that I've shown here accomplishes that task. Now, the distance that we, um, we are from the origin um, of the, of the these are called projections. So the projection of this point onto that line is, is, is this value right here. The distance from the origin is going to give us the principal component score. So the way to think about that is it is the coordinate of this point with respect to this new axis. This line is going to be like uh, an axis. And we want to know, well, how far out are we? And so that, that is the principal component score. Okay, so the second uh, way of characterizing the subspace is it's going to give us the set of scores that have the largest variance. So in summary, we seek the subspace. Uh, which subspace? Well, it's the one that minimizes the sum of squared errors or equivalently maximizes the variance of the scores. So what I've said is um, summarized on this slide. So here are the two criteria. Minimize the sum of squared errors or maximize the variance of the scores. Now, it turns out that th this solution is going to be given by the eigenvectors of the correlation or covariance matrix. Here are some other results. So if we take uh, x times the eigenvector, we get the scores. Uh, these are called scores or also the, the principal components. The eigenvalues give us the variance of the scores. So with, with this in mind, let's go run a principal components analysis in R, then we'll repeat this in SAS just to see what, what, um, what happens in SAS. So I'll bring the data set into R and then we can use principal components to fit it. Now the scale equals true tells R that we want to use the correlation matrix rather than the covariance matrix. So we're going to do this whenever uh, we, we want to standardize the data first. So computing a correlation matrix standardizes the data first and that's going to make all the units commensurate. In this particular example we could have uh, gotten by without that scale equal to true, since um, the way I've rigged the data, uh, the units are, are equal. But um, let's just have scale equal to true. Now we can do this um, if, if you like. So fit equals PR comp dat scale equals true. And if I plot fit, we get what's called a Shri plot. So these Shri plots show us how much each component explains in terms of variances. Okay, so the first component explains about 1.4 something in variance, and the second one only explains um, a little bit less than 0.6. 
Now this particular tree plot's not very interesting because it only has two bars. We usually want to look for an elbow. So we capture a large fraction of the variance with this first component. Now if we do a summary on fit, we'll see exactly what fraction of the variance we get. So we get 70, 72, 73 percent of the variance with the first principal component, and so that first bar is about 73 percent of the area. Now there's another object in here which is fit dollar s dev. R gives us the standard deviations rather than the variances, so if we square this we get variances. So the, uh, the first uh, component gives us 1.45 of the variance, the second one 0.48. And if we go back to our tree plot, the height of this bar is going to be 1.45. The height of the other bar is really 0.548, and that, that is roughly what we see on there. All right. Now, the um, fit dollar x component gives us the actual principal component scores. Now, if I find the variance, let's just find the variance of fit dollar x dollar pc1. And I made a mistake. So let's let's do the column, let's specify it this way, column one. And so the variance of these 10 numbers is 1.45, which is exactly what the eigen, first eigenvalue tells us. Um, the second column is, is um, telling us how far off the line is, so 0.32 and so forth. That's telling me what these errors are. So it's saying what, how, how far in this other direction we have to go to reach the original points. So how much uh, variance is that? We can find that out simply by finding the variance of that column. So 0.5486, and you'll see that's exactly what the second eigenvalue is. So the principal component has made that as small as possible. Now the rotation is what gives us the, um, the directions. So what direction is this line? Well, that's given, us, given to us by the eigenvectors, which is stored in that, um, that rotation component. So let's just go look at that fit dollar rotation, and sure enough, we get that. So notice this is going to give us um, you know, a direction that's a 45-degree line. This is going to give us something, a 45-degree line in the other direction. So those are all the main pieces in, in, the, in the R output. Let's do the same thing in SAS. So in SAS, we're going to use something called PROC PRINCOMP. And so when we uh, run PROC PRINCOMP, this is what we get. Here are the eigenvalues. You'll see you get exactly the same eigenvalues as R. The proportion of the variance is the um, same as what R reported. We get really similar eigenvectors with one small difference, okay? The signs have been removed. So R gives us positive 0.707, R gives us negative 0.707. Those two are completely different. It's just that the scores are gonna have different signs. So if we look at this, the first point has a, a score of positive 0.91, whereas here it was negative 0.91, and that's because the um, the scores on uh, the the, the um, signs on those eigenvectors were flipped. Okay, so we get exactly the same thing. Now we, we could also do this in proc factor. So by default, proc factor gives us a principal components analysis rather than a factor factor analysis. We need to set some special options to get a a true factor analysis. So if I were to factor analyze these two variables, we see the eigenvectors are exactly what we got before, 1.45, you know, 72.57% of the variance. So all that's identical. The factor loadings are different. In fact, they give us two sets of loadings, which gets a little bit confusing. So one set of factor loadings is 0.85 for both variables, 
The other set, which is called a standardized scoring coefficient, is 0.586. So slightly different than what we got from either of the principal components. Let me um, now try to explain what's going on with these. So these standardized scoring coefficients are going to give us factor scores that will have variance 1. So I've saved my factor scores in a data set called scores and over here I've run uh, proc means to find the variance and sure enough the variance of my factor scores are 1. So you know it's just another scaling. Um, sometimes it's desirable to have variance 1, sometimes it's desirable to have unit length. By the way, these loadings guarantee unit length. If we were to take um, the, the first loading, 0 0.70707, and square it, and then notice the second one is exactly the same, so let's multiply all this by 2, we're going to get 1. Okay, so principal components, PrintComp and PRComp, choose the loadings so that the eigenvectors have length 1, Proc factor chooses um, these standardized scoring coefficients so that the variance of the uh, factors is 1. So they're, they're really describing the same points with uh, just different measuring units. Okay, now what about the factor scores, factor loadings? The thing that's special about these factor loadings is that they give you the correlation between the factor and this x variable. So just to check this, I ran proc core. And so what you'll see is that the correlation between the factor scores, so this column and x1, is exactly that loading, 0.85188. If you correlate x2 with the factor score, you get exactly the same thing. And that shows up in this correlation matrix. So why all these different solutions? Well, the way to think about this is that PCA, regardless of which implementation we use, whether it's R, uh, SAS PrintComp, or SAS Factor, all give us exactly the same subspace, but it uses a different, each of these use a different basis for that subspace. So here are some possibilities. Let's take um, a vector 1,1. One, one. Now, Remember what I said about these scores. Take x times this eigenvector. So in other words, we're going to take 1 times x1 plus 1 times x2. So let's go take a look down here. This first column gives the scores with respect to this basis. So if we take 1 times 1 plus 1 times 1, we get 2. Then 1 times 2 plus 1 times 2 is 4. In essence, all we're doing with this, with this uh, way of characterizing that, that line, that subspace, is we're adding x1 and x2. So with this as the basis, these are the scores, 0, 2, 4, and 6. But this is not the only possible basis. So let's go back and examine what SAS PrintComp was doing. SAS PrintComp was really giving us a, a basis U2, which was this 1, 1 vector divided by the square root of 2. Now the reason for this is that this is going to give us um, a vector, a basis vector of length 1. So again, if we take 1 over the square root of 2, and we were to square this and multiply it by 2, we get exactly 1, showing that that vector has unit length. Now, what are the coordinates with respect to this basis? Well, the coordinates of the, of the point 1, 1 would be, well, it, it, the, the, the coordinate would be the square root of 2. So if you think about um, a triangle with legs each of length 1, the length of the diagonal is the square root of 2. So that's exactly what, you know, the nice thing about this is that these scores give you actual distances. Likewise, the point 2 would have a score of 2 times the square root of 2, and the value 3 would be 3 times the square root of 2. 
So these coordinates are all in the same proportion as these. They're just expressed in different units. So it's kind of like going from inches to centimeters. Now what did R do? Well, R chose a basis that was minus u2 over the square root of 2. And we have the same property except these things are just going backwards. So we get a nice distance. None of the um, programs did what, what I'm going to call basis 4, but um, let's take a look at basis 4. So basis 4 is just going to be the vector 1 half 1 half, or equivalently take a half of this 1 1 vector. What's that giving us? Well, that's giving us the mean of the two coordinates. It's like average the two x values. So if you average 2 and 2, what do you get? Well, you get 2. So that's a, another very legitimate set of coordinates that uniquely identify the points. And notice everything's still in proportion to each other. Now let's look at the two different sets of coordinates that SAS gave us. So the standardized um, scoring coefficients were 0.58 times that 1, 1 vector. And so if you wanted to use that basis, here are your coordinates, then um, you know, the, the, the factor loadings, the actual factor loadings reported were 0.58188. And if you were to use that basis, you'd get these uh, scores. So all of these, the, my point with all of this is that all of these um, you know, vectors for characterizing that space, return the exact same points, but express them in different units. So in practice, you could use any of these bases uh, as factor scores, and they, you know, all of these would have a correlation of one with each other, um, with the exception of this one that, that had the negative, and that, that, that would have an, a, a correlation of minus one. But the point is you can use any of these in future computations as factor scores, and you'll come to the same conclusions.